Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 25th April 2020. I am Sagan I used to work in IT, mostly based in Singapore. I have retired now. I am living in Thailand, swing trading stocks using Q trading systems and techniques that I develop. You may watch this and other trading related videos on my YouTube channel trading profitably and contact me using my email id trading profitably at gmail.com i regularly share live stock analysis on my traders forum saganandi.com and also on my twitter page saganandi all these resources are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them Disclaimer, this demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts and then I will demonstrate the use of the 360 degrees analysis technique where you can align the forces from the market level, sector industry level, fundamental level as well as technical level with your trades giving you truly high probability low risk trades. What are the systems that I will use? For technical analysis, I will use either Q Elite on TradeStation or Q Global in conjunction with Q Finder on Metastock. For the rest of the 360 degrees analysis, that is stock fundamental and peer analysis, sector industry rotation analysis and market analysis, I will use the systems that are based on Metastock Zenith, that is Q Vital for fundamental analysis, Q Edge for sector industry rotation analysis, and I may or may not use Q index, but Q index can be used for market level index analysis. All of these systems can be used in full real time mode, giving a trader the ability to make decisions probably a little bit ahead of others. That was the last slide of the presentation. I will now continue with the live system. Beginning the commodities analysis with oil ETF USO, I am using the standard weekly, daily at a glance template. Using this single template, you may decide if there is a low risk entry opportunity in only a few seconds using the unambiguous trade setups and their checklists. In the weekly chart, price is dropping sharply. This week's backdrop candle color and shape both are bearish. Price dropped with extreme bearish pressure, extreme high activity. In the daily chart, price is below the lower boundary level. In the last market roundup also I mentioned that oil has dropped a lot. The optimal time to short oil has passed. Now it is too late to short. If price goes up from here, then you may look for a buying opportunity using one of the Q trade setups. Gold ETM GLD. The weekly backdrop color and shape both are bullish. It is going up now for several weeks.
as I explained in earlier market roundups, the optimal point to buy gold was on this day. Since then, price is going up. When price hit the upper boundary level, you could book partial profit and then let profit run on the remaining position. If you did that, you are still holding partial position of gold. On Friday, it displayed a bearish headwind possible reversal signal. However, the candle shape is bullish and also the weekly backdrop candle color and shape both are bullish. Therefore, there is no headwind reversal trade setup. However, because the headwind signal has come, if you are holding a position in gold, you may consider applying trailing stop. You may put the trailing stop just below the memory trend line support. After the commodities, I continue with the sector level analysis. This graph represents one month sector performance. Over one month, all the sectors went up. What happened after that? Over last 10 days, it weakened. Four sectors were up and seven were down. More bearish than bullish. And then this week, it weakened a little bit further. This week, three sectors went up and eight went down. In the beginning, it was bullish. Then it weakened. And this week, it weakened further. Energy is one sector that is bullish that went up across the one-month period, 10-day period, as well as 5-day period. And it outperformed the other sectors by far, going up by 25 plus percentage in last one month when energy sector was just starting to go up. Not now. Now it is already up for one month. But when it was starting to go up, I could use the live 360 degrees analysis to buy some of the energy sector stocks. And all those trades resulted in very nice profit. I shared several of them in the traders forum using live analysis, not after knowing the result. Let me review two of those trades to demonstrate how you could use the queue systems to buy the stocks probably well ahead of others. This is my traders forum sagarnandi.com. To gain full access, you may register and log in. I have already logged in. There are several categories. Under the category Sagarnandi's trade ideas, I regularly share live stock analysis. Recently, I shared a trade idea on Halliburton HAL. You may search for Halliburton using the search bar. This was the post. If this languishing industry can recover, you may check that stock for a buying opportunity. This was a post on Halliburton. I shared it on 22nd April, three days ago. As usual, I attached the 360 degrees analysis snapshot. You can see that Halliburton's industry was weak for a long time. And right on that day, zero day represents real time score. Just on that day, the score turned cyan. That is relatively stronger. And the pace column showed that it was accelerating as well. If you look at the industry now, you may see many of these recent periods are in cyan color. I didn't wait for that. I could buy the stock just on the very first day 
the industry became strong and it started to accelerate. That was what I could observe from the real-time industry rotation to QH. And you can see from the date stamp, I could identify it in the morning session itself. Then I looked at the stock Halliburton using the Q Vital peer analysis tool. When I posted it, the stock was up by 8.3 percent. 22 stocks were up and 6 were down in the industry, showing the industry was going up as a whole. The stock was also paying a nice dividend yield of 9.6 percent. It had excellent valuation. The valuation score was in cyan color and on top of that it had accelerating and positive earnings growth in the latest quarter. It also had a short squeeze potential. In terms of fundamentals, there were many factors telling that it was okay to buy the stock. Then I looked at the technical chart using Q at a glance template. The weekly turned cyan bullish for the first time after this significant drop. In the daily it created higher low, higher high and then it was starting to go up with a cyan color candle. That is flow candle color was cyan that is also shown by the green color in the ribbon. That made all the requirements of a Q go with flow trend following long trade setup. I could identify the trade setup early in the morning session using 360 degrees analysis. The technicals gave me a low risk buy point. The fundamentals were very strong both in terms of valuation as well as earnings growth in the last quarter and the industry was just about to go up. You can see the stock was also just starting to go up from a relatively low price level. That was the time when I shared the trade idea, not after the stock went up. What happened after that? I followed up with another post. I took a long position in Halliburton on this day using real-time chart and in two days it hit the upper boundary level. My position had more than 18% profit and I decided to book profit in the trade. You could book partial position or you could book full position. It is one's personal choice but when the trade hit the planned profit target of upper boundary and the profit was already significant, 18% in two trading days, I tend to book at least partial profit and I did the same in Halliburton. Why don't I review another energy stock trading idea that I shared on my forum that was on Devon Energy DVN. This was the post. Real time top down analysis using Q systems. I shared it on 31st March, 25 days ago. Let's have a look at the snapshots. Right on that day, the energy sector strengthened and it started accelerating. That was on 31st March, several weeks ago. I didn't wait for the sector to be strong for one month or two months. Using the real-time sector rotation analysis tool, again in the morning session itself, I could identify that energy sector was recovering. Using the technique of top-down analysis, I drilled down from energy sector to the energy industries. 
and I saw all the energy industries were going up and they were accelerating as well. I found a stock from this industry, oil and gas exploration and production. Oil and gas exploration and production. The stock was Devon Energy, DVN. When I shared it, it was up by 16.5%. The stock had a dividend of 6.9% dividend yield. On that day, 37 stocks were up and 3 were down in the industry. DVN had excellent valuation shown by cyan color. And once again, like in the case of Halliburton, it had positive and accelerating earnings growth as well as a short squeeze potential. Fundamentals were looking pretty good. Then I looked at the technical chart. In the weekly chart, the backdrop candle color turned neutral. The shape was bullish and it was starting to go up with extreme bullish pressure and bullish pressure U turn. In the daily, it gave a bullish traffic light candle color and daily price was also going up with extreme bullish pressure. Looking back I saw that the last three pressures were all bullish. Though it was consolidating all the pressure days were bullish days. Looking at that I thought it was a nice opportunity to buy the stock at a very low price level. That was on 31st March. Let's look at the stock's live charts now, Defon Energy. This is Defon Energy and here I am using Q Elite on Trade Station. I shared the trade idea on this day, 31st March. In the morning session, you can see by the end of the day, price pulled back little bit. It had an upper tail by the close. Because I live in Thailand, sometimes I don't wait for the close of the market. I took a position based on the real-time analysis that I shared. From there, price continued to go up and this week it hit the upper boundary level. That would be the initial profit target and you could book at least partial profit. How much profit did it give? Let's find out. Even considering the high of the day I shared the post and close of Friday, this Friday, you can read the third number from the bottom. The trade gave 40% profit. Note that the day when I bought the stock and I shared the post initially in the forum, that day ended with an upper tail. Therefore, if you were watching the stock and waiting for the market close to take the long position, you wouldn't probably buy the stock on that day, not near market close. Watching the upper tail, you might wait and try to take a long position on one of the subsequent days either using the daily chart or using the fine-tuned real-time chart. In that case also you would end up with a significant profit. Both in case of Alibarton and also in case of DVN I could close the trades with a significant profit. Is now the right time to buy energy sector stocks? We can make that decision objectively based on the fully real-time QH sector industry rotation analysis tool. Let me come back to sector performance. We looked at the one month sector performance. Now let's compare this week's performance with the previous week. The red bars here represent last five days that is this week's performance and green bars represent previous five days performance shown by last five days. 
previous five days. Last week, four sectors were up, seven were down. This week, it deteriorated a bit. Three are up and eight are down. Last week, which wares were up? Healthcare, consumer staples, communication services. These three were up. These three were in defensive areas. And then information technology was also up, non-defensive, but by a smaller percentage. That was previous week. What about this week? This week, three sectors are up. One is energy. For the week, it is the biggest gainer by far, went up by more than 13%. And the two other sectors that went up, one of them is healthcare, defensive sector, went up by a small percentage. And information technology, which is non defensive, however, it went up by an even lower percentage. All the other sectors went down by significant percentages. That is the picture of this week versus previous week. What about Friday itself? Let's find out. This is one week sector performance and the magenta bars represent Friday's performance. Friday, all the sectors were up. Over five days, three were up, eight were down. Over two days, it improved. Ten were up and one was down. And on Friday, it improved further. All the 11 sectors were up. If you think of the pattern for a while, you see that over one month period, the sectors are bullish. Over 10 days, it weakened. Over 5 days, it weakened further. But over 2 days and 1 day period, it is starting to gain momentum again. If you keep that pattern in mind, you will see that there is a likelihood the market is going to create a higher low and going up from there, probably giving some trend following trade setups in individual stocks. We call that trade setup go with flow in Q systems. Let's see from the market ETFs if indeed they are giving or about to give trend following trade setups. S&P 500 ETF, SPY. In the weekly chart, it is going up. This week's backdrop candle color is bullish. However, the shape is indecisive. In the last live market meetup, I mentioned that there is a memory resistance line in the daily chart. The optimal buy point would come if price could break out of that memory resistance. That has not happened yet. In the daily, price is going up with higher high and higher low. If next week price can break out of the memory resistance and give a cyan flow color candle, that will signal the go with flow long trade setup in SPY. You may look for a buying opportunity in SPY or even better, you could look for some fundamentally strong stock in strong industry or accelerating industry that is also giving a trend following long trade set. If you do that, then you will be aligning the forces from market level, industry level, fundamental level and technical level, all the levels with your trades. QQQ, a similar picture. The weekly is bullish in color and here the shape is also bullish. Daily has memory resistance. If it can break out of that, it will signal the optimal buy point in many individual stocks as well. 
Daya, very similar to SPY, a doji candle in the weekly chart, backdrop candle color is bullish. In the daily, it is inside a triangle pattern bound by resistance memory trend line at the top, support memory trend line at the bottom. Friday's candle shape is bullish. If it can break out of the memory resistance, that may give optimal buy point in many individual stocks. IWM, this was relatively weaker compared to the other market ETFs. However, this week it became relatively stronger. The backdrop color is bullish and the shape is also bullish. And this is the only one of the market ETFs that actually went up. You can see that from the activity bar in weekly chart being in green color. However, in the daily chart, it is moving inside a range. If it breaks out of the range, you may look for a buy setup in small cap stocks. Time to make a call on the market outlook and also on the preferred trade direction. Over one month, all the sectors are bullish. Though over 10 days and 5 days, the sectors weaken on Friday and also over last two days, the sectors strengthen again. So my view of the sectors is bullish. What about the market ETFs? All the four market ETFs are having bullish backdrop color in the weekly chart and the shapes are more bullish than bearish. All the weekly candles have long lower tail. Some of them are doji candle opening and closing almost at the same price level but all of them have long lower tail and the backdrop color is also cyan. Therefore my view of the market ETFs is bullish. What is my preferred trade direction? Here I may have to wait. The market ETFs are near memory resistance for QQQ, DIA and SPY. If they can break out of the memory resistance, then my preferred trade direction will be on the long side. But that has not happened yet. It seems likely that that will happen they will break out of the memory resistance because on Friday the ETFs ended with a bullish shape candle. They closed just below the memory resistance. If they could break out of the memory resistance on Friday, I could probably take a number of long positions in individual stocks. The individual stocks already started giving go with flow long trade setups. I could take them and I did probably take a number of long positions but I was careful about sizing because the market has not broken out of the memory resistance yet. If it breaks out the preferred trade direction will definitely be on the long side. On the other hand if the market ETFs reverse from the memory resistance then I may be careful about my long positions and start to see if I can find some shorting opportunity. Based on that analysis, I am inclined to say that my preferred trade direction is neutral. I will be able to confirm my preferred trade direction next week based on whether the market ETFs are breaking out of memory resistance or reversing from the memory resistance. This is Q Global on Metastock. Here you can use the Q Sonar programs that are using Metastock Explorer. The Q Sonars are here. You may use them to scan for trading opportunities. As I showed, the market is about to give trend following long trade setup. And if that happens, the base trade setups on individual stocks may also be the trend following go with flow long trade setups. You could 
run this individual scan or you could run the combo scans that I use usually. The Qfinder signal long to find all the bullish signals and Qfinder signal short to find all the bearish signals. You can run it on your preferred list of stocks. I ran it on S&P 1500. I mentioned that several stocks are already starting to give go with flow trend following long trade setups. I will now show that is true from the combo scan result using the visual trade analysis tool QFinder. This is QFinder. The long tab contains the data from the bullish combo scan and short tab contains the data from the bearish combo scan. You can find a lot of insight visually from this tool. All the instruments here in the long tab are automatically sorted by default on the percentage price chain. You can change the sort order by double clicking on any of the column headers. The orange color cells represent signal that came today. So Vicor COP gave a bullish pressure signal, a gap up move and a breakout signal today. But the finder doesn't only show today's signals, it also shows historical signals. The green color here is showing that same stock Vicor gave a bullish flow color yesterday. Similarly, the blue colored cells show signals that came this week. The light gray color shows signals that came previous week. And the dark gray color shows signals that came earlier. Simply by looking at a row, you can find a lot of information. For example, in Texas Capital, you can see it is at price extreme low. It gave a bullish pressure today on Friday, gave a bullish flow candle today. And this week, it touched a memory support and also bounced up from there. The last few columns give aggregate signals, number of signals. For Texas Capital, today we had two signals. Over last two days also two cumulative signals and over the entire week cumulative four signals. You may also sort by the cumulative number of signals using these column headers. Let me show that. I am double clicking on the orange color column header and now you can see all the stocks are sorted by the aggregate number of signals. You can then look at the individual stocks and you may look at the stocks that are giving the maximum number of signals today. That would be SVB, Financial, Skywalk Solutions, etc. Once you decide from QFinder which stocks you want to look into, you may use the fundamental and peer analysis tool Vital by using this icon or you can go to technical analysis using the chart icon. This is the summary tab of QFinder and it shows the aggregate information on all the signals and here you can see from the graph that a large number of stocks gave go with flow long trade signal 314 and the number of go with flow short signal is relatively smaller. In fact across almost all the signal categories whether it is gap or breakout or pullback touch 
and reversal and certainly go with flow the bullish signals are much more than bearish signals this shows that the Friday market was pretty bullish and large number of stocks gave possible go with flow long trade setups you could probably buy some of them with more confidence if the market ETFs could break out of the memory resistance lines that didn't happen on Friday but if that happens on Monday or Tuesday next week you may confidently buy several of these stocks that are giving go with flow long trade setups will you buy all of them no you will look at only those which are fundamentally strong and also in strong industries thereby aligning forces from market level industry level as well as technical level those are the trades I call 360 degree trades I already shared several such go with flow long trade setups based on Friday's market close I am not going to spend time to go through them here you may visit my traders forum to have a look at them earlier when I explained how I traded the energy sector stocks and booked profit in them I raised a question is now the best time to buy energy sector stocks and you can get the answer from the objective analysis of the sector and industry rotation here in sector scorecard you can see all the sectors scored across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently for recent periods of 10 days 5 days 2 days all the way to zero days that is calculating the scores in real time in this period energy was the best performing sector and prior to that it was the worst performing sector just when energy started to turn around I could buy stocks like DVN and even this week I bought stocks like HAL and I booked profit in all of them on Friday why did I broke profit firstly of course the trades gave me significant profit and they were hitting my initial profit target but also you can see from the one day score which is now same as the zero to score because the market is closed during the weekend on Friday energy turned from being the best performing sector to the worst performing sector and the pace column is showing that it is now also the most decelerating sector that is not the time to buy energy stocks I tend to say that the sector level is too broad to make trading decisions you may drill down into the industry level energy sector is week now on Friday what about its industries you may click the cog icon to drill down into energy industries and here also you can see that on Friday all the energy industries energy sector industries all of them weekend on Friday looking at that you would avoid buying energy stocks now and look for stocks in other industries which are gaining momentum which are those let me click the refresh button it is going to get the data from the cache where it is calculating everything in real time and I can double click on the zero day column header to sort by that column that is Friday's performance I can double click again to reverse the sort order these are the best performing industries of Friday if you look at the sectors of these industries many of them in fact 8 of the top 10 industries on Friday are in consumer discretionary sector 
that is the sector and these industries are the industries where you may focus to look for buying opportunities. In fact, I shared few buying opportunities from these industries as I already mentioned on my traders forum and one of them is also from this industry, home building industries. You may have a look at my forum sagarnandi.com to see how I applied the 360 degrees analysis technique to identify the trades. Let me summarize. My sector level view is bullish and market level view is also bullish. Only concern is that three of the market ETFs are near memory resistance. If they can break above the memory resistance, then you may find many optimal buying opportunities. And as of Friday's close, there are several stocks giving buying opportunities and many of them are using the go with flow trend following long trade setup. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you again in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.